Okay, so welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Heike and I will be your host for this webinar. Thanks for joining and thanks for being part of our community. A few reminders before we start. The webinar is being recorded and will be shared publicly afterwards on our community at aka.ms slash security webinars. During the webinar, please feel free to ask questions at any time by typing them in the live event Q&A window by clicking on ask a question. Questions you post will be made publicly visible, and if you prefer, you can post your question anonymously by checking the box right below where you enter it. We often get many questions during these webinars, and we are doing our best to respond to all of them in real time. We will also have some time at the end of the webinar to catch some questions answered during the webinar. But if the answer was not provided or if you have additional questions afterwards, please don't hesitate to ask them on the Microsoft Defender for Endpoint Forum at aka.ms slash mdetc. If you are listening to this after the fact as a recording, you can also use that place to ask questions. We love to hear your feedback and how we can improve those webinars, so please do so afterwards at aka.ms slash security webinar feedback. This is really important so we can deliver the content you need. And if you haven't already, join our community at aka.ms slash security community. And so today I'm super excited to have Hadar Feldman present and um, talk about the MITRE ATT&CK 2020 evaluation and assess the results. So Hadar, handing over to you. Thank you. So first I'll open my camera just to say hi to everyone. My name is Hadar and I'm a, a product manager lead in Microsoft Defender for Endpoints. And I'm here today to take you through the uh, MITRE evaluation, what's new, the scope of the evaluation, and of course the Microsoft results. Um, as Ike said, we would love to get any questions or feedback and hopefully even we'll leave some time in the end of the session to go over questions that you guys will publish and kind of dive into uh, the answers, make sure that you get all the information that you need. Um, and with that, let's dive into the results. So first a bit on what is our agenda for today. We will talk a bit about the MITRE 2020 evaluation. It was different slightly from previous years in several properties. So we'll go quickly through these, talk about the scope and what's new of the MITRE 2020 evaluation. Later on, we will discuss the Microsoft evaluation setup. Um, and then of course, dive into uh, different areas of the results and leave time for questions. So that's a bit on what you should expect. And with that, I'll jump directly to the scope of the evaluation. So it is important to talk a bit about what MITRE are looking at when conducting such evaluation. Um, so first and foremost, of course, MITRE are testing detection coverage um, this year also across Linux, Windows, Endpoint and Server. This is the major scope of the evaluation. Um, there's also protection tests uh, that were conducted and soon when we will talk about the setup, we will talk more about that. Um, these were testing the vendors for blocking the attack and blocking it, of course, at the earliest stage of the attack, trying to reduce the, the potential damage that can be caused by these adversaries to an environment. And um, of course, out of the scope of the MITRE 2020 evaluation, same as previous years, MITRE do not test for false positive and do not test for any investigation or response capabilities. We will discuss these a bit later, but this is not, of course, something that um, you will see as part of the results unless you dive into each and every screenshot. So we will kind of capture our perspective on these items as well. So this is the high level scope of what MITRE um, are actually evaluating and detection and protection coverage is at the top of these. With that, we also have some new things that MITRE decided to evaluate this year. Um, we were very happy from new things um, coming into the MITRE evaluation. Microsoft is, of course, a partner of MITRE working together, um, trying to make these public evaluations as valuable as possible for customers. Um, so this year, there were no managed security service providers involved meaning only automated detection took part in the evaluation. No human um, behind the scene looking at the attack going on and conducting uh, real-time detections or alerts, only uh, automated algorithms. And this is very important, um, testing the actual capabilities that will most likely be in the environments. That said, of course, uh, we do have um, uh, also a managed security service providers, the Microsoft threat experts, 
um, that didn't participate this year, uh, but are available. Um, in addition, it is new that, my, that MITRE this year decided to test for both detection and protection, another great addition, two different simulations looking on detection capabilities at a specific setup and protection capabilities in a different setup. Um, this come actually to say MITRE here are basically saying protection is important. Protection is something that um, is the first gate in the environment to block these attacks from uh, taking place. Of course, that uh, detection capabilities are needed in order to understand and learn uh, the attack better. Um, in addition, um, MITRE also um, added uh, um, another factor that wasn't exactly the same in previous years, um, meaning this year in MITRE you could get the highest score on a specific step of the evaluation without raising an alert. This is not being marked or um, identified in most places, there is one specific uh, factor that is talking about alert capabilities and we will discuss it later on, um, but basically getting a technique doesn't necessarily mean an alert. In addition, MITRE added this year Linux that wasn't uh, available in previous years and of course Microsoft decided to participate and participate with protection and with Linux capabilities. Uh, you may notice that some vendors decided not to participate for some of the tests. Um, but, we, but Microsoft participated in all of them and we will discuss the results in every aspect. And in addition, this year MITRE added the MITRE scores, uh, giving some sort of a high level score of how the vendors operated in the different um, um, aspects that were evaluated by MITRE. So talking a bit more about the what's new, which is also kind of what was mentioned before, um, this year, there's technique, tactic, general, telemetry, and none. Uh, none of them is specifically pointing there is an alert or there isn't an alert, but they are um, here to um, test the vendors for how they tell the attack story. What was done, why it was done, just something suspicious maybe happened or just something happened. Um, and of course, none that simply means that it, the um, uh, evidence that were exposed by the vendor did not meet the minimum detection criteria that MITRE defined. Um, in addition, for the protection categories, it's a lot simpler than that. There's simply the option that uh, something was blocked or something wasn't blocked. Of course, in all tests, there were options for vendors not to participate. And last but not least, the MITRE scores, the analytics score, telemetry and visibility, all there to cover or kind of sum up the performance of each vendor um, in the different aspects, whether if it's visibility or um, any other signal that actually identify the technique. So this is a bit of a wrap up on what's new and what's different this year from what MITRE decided to do in previous years based on community feedback, which we are um, very happy to see. Um, so let's quickly try to kind of go over the setup and what it actually means, because again, Previous years, we only had the detection categories, and this year we also have the protection categories that made the setup a bit different for the evaluation. So if we look on the actual evaluation that took place, um, you will see that there were um, four days that uh, every vendor participated in. The first was the Carbonac detection, the first group that might have evaluated or simulated their form of attack. The second day was the FIN7 detection test. Uh, third day was there for overflow, retests, and so on. And the fourth day was the protection tests. So these tests were conducted separately uh, and also had different environments. This is also exposed in the MITRE uh, site in case you would like to see and dive into uh, what MITRE defined for the attack environment. So there were uh, the first victim organization and the second victim organization, both testing detection tests. So as I mentioned, the first tenant was used for detection test only. There was an additional tenant used for protection test only. It is important to, uh, to uh, point here that MITRE actually took some of the detection tests and implemented them in the protection test environment, tests that we, uh, we were not aware of in advance, what steps will be implemented and of course in what way. Um, and these were tested to see in which step of the attack uh, the vendor will block uh, uh, the adversary from ex execu executing additional malicious activities. Um, another important highlight to mention about the setup, um, both tenants for both detection and protection had 
Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, of course, which is the heart of um, this uh, endpoint evaluation, if you like. Uh, but we also had Microsoft 365 Defender enabled with our capabilities for uh, cloud app security, identity, uh, and uh, of course, device and office, and the ability to correlate these signals together. And we will late, uh, later on discuss um, the value of, uh, of this setup and what it provided. Um, another important point is that all tenants had start standard production setup. Um, we exposed the setup in the MITRE site. I will show in a minute how to look on it. Uh, it is available there. Um, and it's important to understand that uh, for Microsoft, uh, it was important to us to come to this test in our standard setup, in a production setup that we know that exists in our customer environments. And the reason is this, this test is not only here to say how good or bad we are or how did we operate in this or that step. This test is something that we also take very seriously in order for us to learn and improve. And we can only learn and improve if we are bringing our own product as we know it with product truth into the environment um, and see how we operate in the same way that we would expect the environment to operate um, in any customer environment without any special uh, adaptations. Um, and of course, we encourage you to look at the setup, uh, to explore the setup that we provided um, to see how well it fits into your environment and to also explore setups that other vendor published. Um, this is a screenshot from the MITRE site. Um, you can see here, by the way, before even talking about the setup, these are the uh, MITRE scores that they provided, detection count, analytic, telemetry, and visibility. Um, it is, um, we were very happy to see our improvement, not only um, as a product or as a competitive uh, statement, but even our improvement towards the years and the hard work that we put into the product, actually reflecting in the MITRE scores along the way with um, the previous evaluations that we participated in. But that's just a side note, and we will talk about the scores in a minute. Um, you can also see right here at the top that there's the vendor configuration available. So you can just click on the particip participants, go to Microsoft, see the vendor configuration, and then click on Carbon Acfin 7. It will expose a whole page explaining our exact setup. And you can see it's here pretty simplified on exactly what capabilities were turned on and what weren't. Um, and so you have the ability to know that if we detected something or protected from something, exactly what component participated in this test and examine it comparing to your environment and setup. So this is very important and worth paying attention to. Tend to be a bit hidden here at the top, but um, there's definitely a very detailed explanation of, um, of the setup in the site. So we definitely encourage you to jump in and see it. Moving on to the results overview. Um, I will pause here. Um, Han Heike, Tenme, folks uh, from Microsoft that is with me here. Any questions coming from the audience that's worth taking so far um, with everyone on the line? So I think we answered <clears throat> all the questions um, in the chat window, but I actually like the one that we're asking if Mitra is doing or like, um, evaluations for other Defender products. And I mean, I, I guess it would be just nice to explain a little bit um, their focus. And last year, for instance, I think we had different uh, products included. Maybe you can. Um, sure. Answer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can say something about that. So um, just from exploring MITRE substeps, uh, you can see that currently most of the evaluation is really device focused. There's a lot of uh, operations going on the device, files, processes, network communication, memory operations, and so on that are device focused. Um, that said, um, we are, uh, as I said, um, we're participating in the evaluation with our Microsoft 365 Defender uh, setup, bringing also identity, cloud up security, and office. Um, this year, uh, we saw mostly uh, signals coming from identity uh, component, helping us um, getting a better picture of, uh, of the attack in this evaluation. Uh, in previous years, we also had um, cloud up security when there was exfiltration from OneDrive. So we had alerts coming from cloud up security. So it really differs between uh, the different um, adversaries that MITRE are choosing in order to uh, conduct the evaluation. 
Um, so we were anyway prepared with our full setup this year. Uh, the best example was Microsoft Defender for Endpoint contributing to the attack story and detection. Uh, but in previous years, we also had uh, uh, other signals. And uh, we believe that in the next year with um, XDR becoming um, greater in all different aspects, uh, we believe we will see more and more focus on um, simulations of steps that are not related to device only. Uh, but of course, we can, also, we can only uh, wait and see what MITRE will prepare for us in the next evaluation. And I will later also share exactly how a Microsoft Defender for Identity contributed um, this evaluation. Um, and also, of course, the way that the fact that we had signals coming from both device and identity um, actually enabled us to correlate signals and conduct a, more of an end-to-end -end understanding of the attack and even alerts that are based on signals from different components. Um, so for just to kind of wrap it up from the MITRE aspect, um, it's mostly device focused, but we also see sometimes steps that are related to identity, to cloud, and we believe we will see that next year too. Um, and we always come with our best setup as we believe that is uh, there to keep customers safe. Thank you. Awesome. So with that, oh, okay. No other questions worth um, taking. Please stop me if uh, you feel like there's a question that worth. Yeah. Uh, kind of taking with the form. Thank you. Awesome. So with that, uh, we'll jump into the results overview. Um, what will it be? It will be a highlight of areas where we think it's worth discussing the results uh, in a good way. What won't it be? Some cryptic math question combining numbers from different steps. We feel like we are proud of what we did with the MITRE evaluation. Um, and we think it shows the best of Microsoft Defender for Endpoint and Microsoft 365D as a whole. Um, and we also respect the way that MITRE granted scores and looked at the results. Um, and so we will simply highlight places where we feel um, worth uh, deep diving into. So of course, how can we not start with the vendor scores? And I would like to start with a point that is really important to us in order to um, kind of understand our philosophy of the product. So there's a lot of tension between creating an alert, right, as something that is basically what we know how to work with. Um, all security solutions, or most of them at least, have APIs that translate alerts into um, other SIM products or ticket systems, or even just working based on the security solution, have some sort of queue of assignments, which is the alerts or incidents um, that the SOC and the security operation uh, uh, analysts need to work with. Um, and there's, of course, also the balance of having alert fatigue, which often makes a lot of um, noise and, and creates a, an issue of understanding and investigating um, an incident. And here we feel like um, we want to be very, very proud in our detection count um, because creating a signal telling what was done, it's one thing and it's, it's very important and we totally understand why MITRE point that as an important score, getting a technique score, right? But doing all that without getting the SOC attention is something that we feel like would make SOC life hard. Um, actually noticing and understanding there's something bad going on in the environment that they should quickly take action. And for that reason, um, we are very proud in the fact that all steps created alerts, or at least the majority of steps created alerts, uh, in a way that won't bypass the SOC attention. The SOC would definitely notice that something bad is going on um, and prioritize that over anything else. So the next question will be, okay, but what about alert fatigue, right? You create all these alerts, how come, how the SOC supposed to handle that? And that's where, of course, we are bringing in our uh, important capability of correlating all these alerts together into a one incident. And this may sound like something simple, but understanding that several alerts from different devices, from different processes and evidences involved, identities and, and uh, any other evidence that is part of the attack, correlate and understand that these are all part of the same attack that should be investigated as a whole is a huge challenge that we daily face and keep improving in. And MITRE actually pointed it in a great way and, and showed this capability at its best where we had two incidents with all the devices involved and all the alerts involved 
actually overcoming this obstacle of alert fatigue. So we do have the incident. The incident contains many alerts, pointing it clearly as something that should be investigated. Yet the queue is not busy with hundreds of items to investigate because it is all part of the same incident. And that's how we feel like we had this good combination of bringing things to the SOC attention in a way that they cannot miss, yet not creating this big fatigue that may be confusing and actually reducing the SOC efficiency instead of pointing the urgency towards this important incident or complex attack that is going on in the environment. And with that, um, after talking a bit about the scores, I will uh, jump into protection. Um, so again, protection is new this year, and so it is important to understand, uh, those of you that um, went over the results in the MITRE site could see that protection results do not look like the detection results. They don't have this um, uh, list of substeps and result on each substep with a screenshot. It is actually a bucket of substeps for each test marked uh, with the test, the step that was blocked. And the importance here was to see if, for example, I have test number one and it has eight substeps. The importance was, were we blocking at the eighth stage or the sixth stage, or were we blocking the attack at first or second stage or at the earliest point possible? So the attack won't progress and create additional damage, even if eventually being blocked at whatever late step that took place. And when we look on our results from protection, which is clearly critical from preventing damage uh, to the environment, uh, we were very happy to see um, that in every test that was conducted from MITRE on the protection side of the map, we were um, always blocking at the first uh, step or at the most initial step possible meaning we had the largest number of tests blocked at first sight. Um, and this is something that we feel very proud of, knowing the importance of protection and understanding how critical it is um, for environment to be able to uh, get to the attack and block it as, fast, as, um, as soon as possible. Uh, and by that, reducing the number of actions that actually need to be taken by the SOC uh, to contain the damage. Um, so just again to point out, as this is a bit of a different angle um, from what uh, the detection test is looking like, the importance is how fast did we, we, did we stop it? And we blocked that first sight at the biggest number of tests. And this is something that we're super proud of and feel like uh, really well position our protection capabilities um, in, this, uh, in this evaluation. Of course, there were many vendors that did not participate in the in, in the protection evaluation. So the names that you see are mostly vendors that um, um, participated and took place took a action in the protection test as well. So with that, I'll jump to another highlight that we would like to dive into, um, which is the Linux side of the map. So um, as some of you maybe know. Um, Microsoft uh, started, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint started its journey with cross-platform uh, systems not that long ago. Uh, we already have um, support for Mac OS and um, iOS and so on. Um, and our Linux support is relatively new, if you'd like. It was released um, several months ago um, and is uh, something that we uh, worked really hard on because we wanted to bring it to be top level um, and even it, even though it was relatively new uh, in the time of the MITRE evaluation, we decided to participate in the evaluation because we felt like uh, new as it is, it still uh, has everything that is needed to be a leader in Linux protection and detection. Um, and we were very happy to see that we were right um, because when we were zooming into the Linux results, trying to kind of learn and understand how did we perform specifically in Linux and what we can learn in order to improve, uh, we were super happy to see that basically every step in the detection test um, was uh, actually detected as a technique, uh, also creating an alert, but also pointing the exact technique uh, as MITRE measured. Um, and not only that, the protection test of Linux, just like all the other protection tests that we showed earlier, was blocked at first stage 
meaning the protection capability was actually stopping the attack before it managed to cause any sort of damage to the environment. Um, so kind of to wrap it up, even though Linux is our, uh, I think, relatively new uh, solution, it is already positioned as a leader um, for both detection and protection for Linux. Um, definitely positioning our journey into cross-platform as something that is already at the top of the line and not just uh, um, uh, learning and growing. So we were extremely happy to see that. And of course, also taking all the learnings that uh, we could have. We also encourage you to look on the screenshots from uh, the evaluation and kind of see that our Linux um, investigation experience and the whole experience basically coming with our new Linux solution is actually seamlessly embedded into the product, part of the same incidents, giving the same hunting and investigation capabilities. Um, and we were very happy to bring that to the front during the MITRE evaluation. So we talked about protection, we talked about Linux. Uh, of course, now we need to dive into detection. Um, so here again, we start with this statement of saying, bringing the attack into the SOC attention is critical. Having the ability to alert on suspicious behavior and say, you need to know something is going on, you need to take action, and this something is huge, um, is something that we are very proud of. Um, all that, again, correlating into two incidents, uh, representing the two different distinct attacks, um, make sure that the investigation is as effective as possible. And we will show um, an image of the incident and exactly what it looked like from the MITRE environment of the evaluation, along with some additional examples, uh, just to kind of give you the idea of what it really looked like. Of course, all these examples are also available um, in the MITRE site. Um, another point that is really worth stressing, and it is also related to um, previous topic around setup and how exactly uh, what is our approach or our philosophy when we are conduct when we are participating in the MITRE evaluation. Um, we really honestly believe in that, that Microsoft need to bring its out of the box automated AI capabilities. No tweaks or tweaks, no special tuning, um, nothing that may occur and um, create a performance issue or crush the device or any sort of gap um, that may happen for the simulation. Because for us, what we're bringing to the simulation has to be what our customers are experiencing. This is our way of learning. This is our way of identifying our gaps, learn from them and actually get better. Um, and taking that from this experience of the MITRE evaluation, which is super educating, um, not every day a security solution has the opportunity to conduct to participate in such simulation with such advanced attack and put all our tools there. Um, so this is an important learning capability for us and it makes us bring our product truth with no trick or no tweaks and tricks, meaning if you look at the setup as we published it and you have it in your environment, this is the exact same behavior um, that you should anticipate to and we stand behind it and feel like uh, this is something we should be proud of. Um, if something works in the evaluation, it has to work in real production environments. Um, that said, of course, um, it is also um, important to state, we mentioned that MITRE do not test for false positive. Um, we had many discussions with MITRE about that, and it's really a challenging area to test for. Um, and rarely POCs manage to test uh, false positives. It's a challenge by itself. Uh, but it is important to state that if um, if we would use any specific mode in order to you know, look good in the MITRE evaluation, um, that this of course risks our customers' environments with alert fatigue and false positive that would just create noise and really harm the SOC efficiency in investigating such complex incident. Um, and that's why we feel like we have to bring our accurate algorithms that we actually expect to behave um, the same way in catching the attack, but also run in all of our customers environment, not creating false positive and uh, having a very high quality performance um, of these algorithms and AI driven uh, detections. Um, just kind of diving also kind of staying in the area of detection before I'll pause to see if there are any additional questions. Um, 
to kind of stick to the area of detection, it, it is also important to um, look at the attack and kind of zoom out. Um, because when we look on the MITRE attack, then um, we see so many different steps that uh, MITRE implemented all have reasons behind them, all represent step of the attack that the attacker would do in order to gain um, some specific uh, um, step or some specific tactic, right? During the initial breach, um, under deploying the toolkit, doing some discovery in order to move laterally and so on. And uh, all the sub steps that were conducted in the, in the evaluation are all um, really part of these steps that represent a specific goal. And when we were zooming out and kind of examine our uh, capabilities and see if we had any places where we had huge misses or something that we have to go fix, we actually saw that in every single step there were techniques and alerts uh, triggered and telling the, the, uh, the SECOP uh, that there's something going on and this something is initial breach or this something is a uh, profile of victim user and so on. So if if we look on a real life investigation, if we look on an actual SecOps sitting in front of the product, looking at the alerts and trying to understand what happened, actually every single step had the needed coverage in order to understand the attack story. And this is something that was very important for us to test in order to see, um, of course, that we learn from every sub step and we learn from every implementation and take it and try to see where we, uh, where we can improve. Uh, but yet in the coverage area, we were pleased to see um, that there was no big step or something that the attacker is doing that would be uh, hidden from the SECOP um, in the form of an alert or anything else. So with that, I'll pause to some questions if we have anything worth talking about in the chat. I had a nice question for you and now Tanmay already answered it, but uh, maybe ah. just <laughs> I think it's a good one. It was um, at the beginning of your presentation. You showed the detection count um, mm -hmm. and there was a number of 356 uh, what uh, 356 slash mm -hmm. 174 <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, so kind of what uh, the question is, how could we interpret the detection count 356 to 174? Is it correct to assume that the 147, uh, 174 <laughs> is the maximum value? Right, so um, it is important to say that several steps had uh, were alerted from different angles and I can give an example. Um, uh, for, I think the best example would be um, to say that we also had our um, protection capability in audit mode in the detection attack and so in the detection simulation and so in several cases we had our behavioral alerts alerting on a step but also our protection uh, capabilities in audit mode alerting on the step just telling us that it would have been blocked or just saying hey this thing is conducting this or that uh, behavior and this thing is also an interpreter um, so that's the reason uh, that in some cases we had uh, many of uh, um, more than one uh, uh, detection um, on each step and in addition I believe and with that I'm, I'm not sure we'll have to double check but I believe that MITRE um, count um, detection not necessarily as an alert meaning something was detected um, and with that maybe uh, we can um, try and think that if, for example, we also had both an alert and an indication in the timeline and an additional alert coming from our protection capabilities, then over the same, the same step, MITRE counted it as three detections. Um, so I think these examples may somehow explain the, um, the difference between um, the number of steps that were executed and the numbers of the, of the detections. I hope it makes sense. Thank you. Yes. If not, please um, send a follow up question <laughs> to the person who answered, uh, who asked. Great. Um, yeah, so with that, we kind of talked about the fact that bringing an alert is also very important. Um, the fact that we are proud in our detection capabilities in this test and the fact that every step uh, was being detected um, with no holes in the plot, um, whoever needs to investigate this would know on uh, each of these steps 
that something is going on and this something is going on for this specific cause. Um, so this is another important um, thing to keep in mind. Um, with that, I'd like to dive a little bit on the way it was actually represented. I mean, all the screenshots are, of course, available in the MITRE site, but uh, it can be a bit exhausting to go over all uh, uh, the different screenshots for all the different steps. And so I kind of like to highlight um, different factors of the evaluation that we think are interesting to share. Um, so we talked a lot about our incident. So we keep saying that, but what it looks like or how is it being done? Um, so here it is uh, important to kind of share. First, this is the uh, incident experience for Microsoft Defender 365, uh, Microsoft 365 Defender, sorry. Um, and this is, this is an actual screenshot from the evaluation. Those of you that saw the details on the steps and devices involved would probably recognize uh, the names of the devices and users participated or maybe some of the alerts. Um, so this is the incident that we're talking about that actually is there in order to reduce alert fatigue and tell the end-to-end -end attack story and investigation experience in a clear way that stressing the importance and the urgency of this incident, yet not creating a huge queue with many alerts that the relationship between them is not very clear um, and so maybe very confusing. So I'd like to quickly go over this experience and kind of talk about what we see here, and then we can kind of dive into additional places in the investigation experience. And, and before I do that, I just would like to highlight that um, yet again, when we look on how we performed in MITRE, the first thing that we have in mind is what would happen if a customer of Microsoft 365 Defender would experience such complex attack? And what were the tools that they have in order to um, be aware of this attack, investigate, take action. And so for us, we measure ourselves and learn from this um, even outside of, of the normal scope of the evaluation. And, and that's why we think it's really important to talk about those things too, because eventually someone in the other side needs to know uh, what's going on and have the tools to handle it. And working really hard on these tools, uh, we would actually like to share with you how our real life evaluation environment look like. Um, and so with that, you can see here the, uh, this incident. It's actually from the first day, meaning the Carbonac evaluation. Um, and you can see basically, first you can see that this incident is a multi-stage incident involving different tactics. The title is, uh, uh, has a few more if you hover on it. Um, here in the top, you can see an important representation of the stage of this attack. Um, you would have probably identify this from the MITRE um, attack framework. And you can easily see here that um, every tactic that has alerts in it is marked. And by hoovering on it, you would also be able to see the number of alerts. And that kind of giving us the idea of where the attack is, at what stage this attack and how prog how uh, uh, far did it get? Did it get to uh, stealing creds, to lateral movement, to exfiltration, and so on? Um, of course, having this uh, detection test, and this is a screenshot from our detection tenant, uh, we didn't have our protection uh, turned on. We had them in audit, and so the attack, of course, proceeded into a very late stage of, uh, of the attack, uh, giving us the idea, the kind of opportunity to look on what would an incident like that look like. Um, so we can see that uh, this attack got very far. Um, we can also see all the impacted devices and users in one place that kind of giving us the idea of the attack scope, right? What were the affected assets and maybe how critical they are uh, to me uh, as can be marked by giving tags to these assets or uh, declaring them as high value assets. So very quickly, there's the ability to understand um, what is under this attack scope? Um, what, we, which devices uh, should, I, um, should I take care of? And of course, in also real life scenario, potentially as isolate as the first thing in order to make sure that uh, this attack don't get to additional devices in my environment. Um, here as well, you can also see the affected identities, uh, users that are compromised and actions should be taking on these as well. Um, and um, you can see here some more context about uh, the severity, the status, uh, someone actually handled this, this incident and so on. Um, I would like to also refer you to this uh, list here, which is also represented in the alerts tab, bringing into the incident all the alerts that got correlated into this incident. How they got correlated based on many different uh, um, properties of these alerts and evidences. 
Um, and here I'd like to point out our capabilities of correlating alerts um, to the same incident are ad really advanced algorithms, um, as advanced as actually creating a detection, if you like, uh, because it needs to really understand the attack and make sure that it is all part of the same uh, case or the same incident. So even having different devices and different identities, this attack was correlating all these alerts into this incident, allowing to investigate them all as part of the same case. Um, of course, we can also dive into the involved devices, involved users, mailboxes, which is not relevant in this case, and also the automated investigation if took place um, that can actually run uh, on these devices automatically once an alert was triggered and take action, um, delete evidences and so on, heal the device basically. Um, here in uh, this case, of course, um, everything is an audit, so we can see the investigations running, but they didn't actually do anything. Um, and last but not least, actually very, very important and sometimes really hard to capture, the list of all evidences across the different devices and identities and so on, every file, every process that actually took part of this attack with the ability, of course, to take action over these. Um, so this is kind of giving us a really end-to-end -end understanding of everything that is going on from the assets to the evidences and the alerts that got triggered and all of them, and how far did this attack go. Um, kind of foc focusing us and helping us prioritize um, what's going on and, and, and investigate this attack. And again, this is the actual screenshot from the evaluation. Um, and so with that, I'd also like to dive into um, like what does it mean to investigate such a complex attack and um, how important it is to have the tools and the experience that actually allowing you to understand what happened or to understand the attack story, if you'd like. Um, so this is another uh, real screenshot of the uh, alert story, what happened on this device that actually made us trigger these alerts, that actually pointed these relevant techniques. Um, and here you can see a specific sequence of occasions uh, of uh, suspicious files being launched uh, by a, a very specific user um, and suspicious processing, uh, that suspicious process that is being launched using CMD. We can see here the NetSage operation um, and all the details that are needed in order to kind of learn the sequence of events, what happened, what led to, uh, what point led to the next uh, step, and what was alerted and why, uh, kind of giving us the ability to really um, understand the, this uh, advanced attack. And it's also important to state that every three dots that you see here is also giving you the ability to take action on what happened as part of understanding the alert story. Again, of course, in the MITRE evaluation, this part was less relevant and not being tested. We could not take action through the test um, or during the evaluation, um, so it will be able to proceed. Um, another kind of dive into um, the level of data that is being provided, and again, screenshots from the evaluations itself, um, and how critical it is in order to understand what is really going on. Uh, for example, a scheduled task that is being created uh, with a specific process and what is the name of this task in order to be able to identify it and remove it. Um, of course, what are the MITRE techniques that are associated with it in case there's a need to kind of read more on these techniques and learning them uh, more in depth. And what is the executed process? What is this task actually doing? We are uh, doing our best to kind of provide all this data in the clearest way, but also enabling diving into this. This is kind of a deep dive into these tiles that we've seen before. Um, just by clicking uh, on uh, expanding these tiles, you can get more and more details and help uh, us telling the attack story in a clear way that is making it actionable um, and helping the SECOP understand what's happening. And I would also like to highlight uh, going through the investigation experience, the way we uh, exposed it in MITRE, would like to highlight a new capability that we brought into, um, into the um, device timeline, um, where when investigating a device, sometimes um, it wasn't because of a specific alert or a specific incident that took place. You just want to investigate a sequence of events that happened on a device. That's where our device timeline capability provide a full and deep visibility into everything that happened, each and every raw event that took action on the device. Um, you can find many screenshots of this view um, in our results. I would specifically like to highlight this one as we added a new capability to also kind of show MITRE techniques that took place on this specific device. 
meaning showing their events, uh, but also showing something that is more insightful that is a result of these raw events, even if not necessarily ended up in an alert. Um, so in this case, we can see an attack technique of uh, enumerating a, a vault credentials um, with all the needed explanation, of course, using the MITRE terminology that really help us here to kind of tell the story of what happened and why it happened. Um, in this specific example, of course, stealing credentials from web browsers for credential access. And so this is kind of going through how we see the results and not just like um, how we tell the attack story um, based on, a, on our different views. Um, last but not least, before I'll quickly jump in through M365D capabilities and then sh maybe uh, have a couple of minutes left for questions. Um, another view that you will be able to see in our MITRE results screenshots um, is our hunting capabilities. Um, here again, we, during the evaluation, used um, our capability of advanced hunting to share with MITRE um, details on the telemetry that we have um, and um, the visibility into the steps that MITRE actually executed. Um, so with that example, you can see a query that is basically querying all the events of a, a file creation um, and bringing in a, te a telemetry of what exactly was executed and even some insights on this process that was executed or this file that was created that has a very specific name. Uh, but based on our profiles of files, we could say some additional insights on. And these is, is all queryable using this advanced hunting platform. So in this example, we see a file that had a totally different uh, name, but is actually W script. See the global prevalence of this file and get some really valuable insights. So the investigation can also um, can help getting to the right conclusion of what this file is and why it is here. Of course, usually renaming um, system files is something that is um, suspicious. Um, and this is part of this step that was also alerted. So kind of wrapping up on the importance of not only um, stressing what happened, but also giving the tools in order to look at the end-to-end -end, um, experience or end-to-end -end understanding of this attack and its scope, but yet having the ability to dive into each and every piece of the data that is there in order to conduct the right conclusions on what happened and take the actions in the same context. Um, from many different aspects of both alerts and hunting experiences in Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, all um, views that you can find in the MITRE site in the different results uh, that were published um, that we just wanted to quickly guide you through. So I will use five more minutes um, to talk about Microsoft 365 Defender, and then I would be happy to take questions uh, coming from the audience, so please feel free um, to uh, type your questions and we will try to kind of capture the uh, questions and answer them in the last minutes that we will have. Um, so this will be a good time to do that. Um, diving into Microsoft 365 Defender and its value, I would like to focus in a very specific area. Um, this attack, as well as many other advanced and complex attacks, uh, involved, of course, lateral movement. And lateral movement is a critical, kind of tricky uh, phase of attacks, right? Because we share files and, and, and um, processes and evidences from different types between devices. And the actually the value here is to be able to distinguish the normal activity from an attacker that is moving laterally. Um, so identifying that there is lateral movement going on, um, but also identifying only where there's suspicious lateral movement going on um, is a big challenge that is yet critical in order to understand attack and its scope, right? If we would not alert on lateral movement, we would not have the ability to tie between different devices and actually point them as part of the same attack as we saw earlier in the incident view. So this is highly important um, to be able to identify this, this delegate step. Um, 
And diving into lateral movement and the different advanced techniques used by MITRE in order to do lateral movement, um, we would like to um, maybe share how the Microsoft 365 Defender value really stands up uh, and correlates uh, the right evidences, helping us to identify uh, lateral movement in the environment. So what we see here is um, definitely two different alerts, right? One of them, one that you see on the left, is an alert coming from our component of Microsoft Defender for Identity. Uh, I realize this is probably tiny and hard to read, um, but I will easily translate and say that basically uh, using this identity capability, um, the uh, user that was used by MITRE was um, targeted as compromised and monitored to see um, any suspicious behavior being done with this compromised user that is an anomaly for this normal user behavior. And in this case, also triggering an alert on the remote code execution uh, that was done using this compromised identity. So that again is an independent alert coming from our identity capability, Microsoft Defender for Identity, showing that something um, that a, a remote code execution was done using this identity. On the right side, uh, we can see a, another alert that is actually coming from Microsoft 365 Defender. And that really means that when, um, when this environment has both the Microsoft Defender for Identity sensor as well as a Defender for Device sensor, um, then M365D has the ability to correlate signals coming from both these sensors and creating new intel that is maybe challenging to do using one of them, right? So in this case, we had both MDI and MDE and M365D alerting, um, but it is important to understand that having both these signals from a compromised identity and an activity happening by this identity on a specific device is delivering a new value of understanding lateral movement and have the ability to tie between the activities on these different devices. Um, so this is what we see here on the right, an alert for possible lateral movement involving similar suspicious files combined using compromised ident identity and these files observed on devices. Um, so this is another point of uh, uh, visibility that, that we gain in this setup. And of course, last but not least, it is important to point out that Microsoft Defender for Endpoint by itself also identified discovery and lateral movement in this specific example um, that is maybe a bit hard to read. Um, you can see um, that this analysis of understanding that there is a discovery activity that is associated with a, a discovery as a pure step for lateral movement is based on script analysis, script analysis uh, looking into our anti-malware script interface, analyzing the script and learning uh, on its purposes, uh, specifically here, system discovery using, using WMI. Um, so just to kind of wrap it up this point on M365D, we had both identity and device capabilities. Each one of them individually, of course, triggered alerts and sensed um, that there's a suspicious activity going on and the capability of correlating these signals and bringing together identity and device signals into one alert and uh, one incident in order to tell the attack story is something that is critical and important uh, in, in, uh, in this specific simulation and in many uh, scenarios of advanced attacks. With that, I would be happy to hear any question coming from the audience. So again, we did a great job answering the questions here in the back. Way to go. Background. Yes. Um, let me see if there's, there is one that we would like to read out. Um, duck, 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 duck. In the meantime, I can just jump quickly to the agenda and just kind of wrap up everything that we went through um, as a summary. Um, so first, there were many um, changes into the current evaluation that we were very happy to see, and um, we are coordinated with MITRE on the need and importance of these uh, new uh, tests of Linux and protection and uh, uh, testing for actual detection capabilities with no human uh, involved. Um, 
our setup is something that is available, very detailed. We encourage you uh, to look into it and make sure that your environment is configured in the safest way to give all the value that we showed in this MITRE evaluation. Uh, and in the results, we focused on uh, four different aspects. One of them is the protection value. Uh, other is uh, our Linux capability, which is relatively new, yet a leader at, and at the top uh, of the results from MITRE and the detection capability where we had great coverage or, uh, on the different attack stages, as well as um, uh, having this coverage translated into alerts that will grab the SOC attention, yet correlated into incident that will reduce alert fatigue and make sure that the investigation is focused into the right scope. And at the end, we dived into uh, the importance of experience and sharing the data in an approachable way that can actually help the SecOp to get conclusions, to take actions and to handle this attack in real life and not only uh, for simulation purposes, which is, of course, uh, an important angle and something that we are uh, take very seriously and learn from uh, based on our customers' feedback and based on uh, this simulation as well. And at the end, we... Uh, briefly looked on uh, M365, the value bringing this great example of lateral movement and the importance of combined signals uh, for uh, lateral movement detection. Thank you so much, Hadar. Maybe <clears throat> um, from your, um, like your opinion or recommendation, um, there was a question on how, what's the best way to help our customers ensure that all the controls are properly configured and everything is blocking in a way it should be. Is there like, what's your recommendation for customers to make sure they get all the protection and all the detection? So first I would definitely recommend going through the setup. Uh, if there's anything in the setup that is uh, um, not clear enough, then I would very much recommend to explore our security recommendations inside Microsoft 365D and Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, of course. Our threat and vulnerability management component gives a very clear visibility into all the security recommendations that we give our customers in order to validate that their environment is properly, uh, uh, is, is well configured. Um, so, Everything that is mentioned in our setup that is public in the MITRE site is also available in our security recommendations with a clear actionable way of turning uh, on these, uh, um, these different configurations and their potential impact. And we can share some uh, maybe references for this, for this uh, part of the product as well. Thank you so much. And I'm going to, yes, close the webinar with the recommendations. So again, um, thank you so much, Hadar, and thank you so much, people in the background, for help answering questions. Some reminders before ending the call, the recording and slides will be made available on aka.ms slash security webinars. We have a full schedule. Um, I'm just highlighting a couple of follow uh, um, uh, webinars that are coming up. One is uh, May 25th, which is Microsoft Cloud App Security. Improve your AWS security posture using Microsoft Cloud App Security. And another one is May 27th, where it's about diversity in cybersecurity. And again, registration is on aka.ms slash security webinars. If we miss to answer your questions or if you have follow up questions, you can visit our Microsoft Defender for Endpoint forum at aka.ms slash mdetc. And again, thank you, Hadar, for today's webinar. Thanks for the rest of the team. And of course, um, thank all of you for being part of our community and for joining us on those webinars. Please provide us your feedback because the feedback can help us make sure we deliver the content you are looking for. So we hope to see you next time and goodbye. Thanks everyone. Thank you for joining. Goodbye.